Three years, hundreds of clients, and seven figures in revenue. But what are the five things that I wish I knew before I launched my digital marketing agency? Let's do it. Okay, so the other day, one of my students asked me, what are the five things I wish I knew before launching affluent.co? And it was a really thought-provoking question. I thought, what better place to answer that question than to all of you lovely people? So the first thing I wish I knew before I launched my agency was that I could not be the jack of all trades and you should not attempt to be the jack of all trades. You should focus on one skill and master it. So when I first started my agency, I literally signed up every single client I possibly could. I didn't care what niche they were in. I worked with a restaurant, I worked with a dentist, I worked with a furniture store, a bathroom and kitchen showman, a showroom, gyms. So <laughs> my client list was endless and that's just literally the tip of the iceberg. And so every time I signed up a new client, I had to learn a different industry. I had to learn a completely different marketing strategy. And so it took me a long time to get to grips with those marketing strategies. Now, looking back at it, I learned a lot and I had a lot of variety of learning, but the issue was it took me so much time and it stopped me from scaling up even quicker than I did. I also offered a myriad of different services, right? I would offer email marketing, social media management. I also tried Google ads for a little bit as well. When in reality, my number one bread and butter service was Facebook ads. And that was what was generating the most revenue for my clients. And so at one point, I literally decided to sack off every other service in the agency and just focus on Facebook ads. Now, to this day, we do offer separate services, but we outsource them or white label them to other agencies that we trust. And we just focus on what we do best, and that's Facebook ads for the e-commerce industry. So if you're just starting out, try and focus on one or two things when you're first starting and hone in and really get your offer direct and specialist as soon as you possibly can once you've figured out what things you enjoy doing. Now, the second thing I wish I knew was client communication is actually 50% of your service. And what I mean by this is you could provide or get the best return on investment for your clients possible, but if you do not have a good relationship with them, if you don't keep them updated, you don't communicate with them, then they're not going to enjoy working with you. And they'll just go to another agency who they think can replicate your results because they'll have a better relationship with them. And so it's very, very important that you invest time into building a personal relationship with each and every one of your clients. I pride myself in making my clients my friends. I want them to refer me to all of the business owners they know. I want them to shout about me from the rooftops and have a great relationship with not just myself, but all of the members of our team as well. And as I said, this doesn't just mean that you should be on the phone at nine o'clock every single night. You need to set clear boundaries. And two weeks ago, we had this realization in the agency that we were spending a lot of time communicating with our clients. So there is a line. But what we did is we put together a client communication guide. We send that over to absolutely all of our clients and we send it to new clients too within our contract. And it essentially outlines our policy for how we communicate on what mediums, what platforms, and within what time frame. Then highlights that we will send them a monthly video report to keep them updated, and we will also give them a monthly strategy call where we'll go through their overriding marketing strategy and look at how we can help them grow in other areas of their business that we're not currently helping them with. And that also allows us to upsell them to other products or services if they need them. But it's very, very important at affluent.co, we pride ourselves on having extremely strong client relationships. So our clients will never look elsewhere because of the foundations that we have built through very good communication practices. So make sure that communication is 50% of your service. Don't be annoyed if your client needs a little bit of extra attention. Set the boundaries and invest your time into them and you're going to get so much more out of that relationship than just their service charge. Now the third thing is you won't retain every single client and that is okay. Now, everybody loses clients. Anybody who says they don't lose clients is, is talking crap, okay? When I first started my agency, I worked with a kitchen and bathroom showroom and it was my third ever client and we just didn't hit it off from the go. It was a hard sell on my part and when I started working with them, they weren't getting the content I needed them to create. I started creating content for them, which they didn't like. They had a different vision for their brand or entirely, a different vision that actually wasn't selling their products very well online and we just clashed heads straight away. And so, we stopped working with each other after a couple of months of starting even though they were making return on investment we just didn't have a good relationship with them and that is okay now at the start 
I beat myself up over that. I thought it was my fault. When in reality, business is a two-way thing. The client has to do their part and you have to do yours. Sometimes you will screw up and it's your fault. I remember when we first hired our first ever freelance uh, ad specialist and we were working for a hair transplant clinic at the time, the same people that did this. And uh, I, this, this new ad specialist launched an ad campaign. It was a messenger campaign to generate, generate as much leads as possible to their Facebook page. And they set the targeting on worldwide accidentally. And they had a thousand messages in their Facebook inbox overnight at a cost of like one pence per message. And it just completely screwed up their entire lead system for about a week because they had to filter through all the leads that were legitimate and all the ones that were a complete waste of time. Now, it was my job to mend that relationship and we managed to keep that client, but if they left me in that instance, it's just the way it goes. You're not always going to retain every single client and that is absolutely okay. That's part of the parcel in learning and finding yourself as an agency owner and understanding what you need to do in, to improve to retain clients for a longer period in the future. Right now, we have a client that's been with us for two and a half years because of the great relationship we have for them and of course, the results we get them. We now, on average, retain clients for around 10 months. Some of those clients will leave and they'll want to train their in-house teams. Some clients might just not work out with and other clients will just want to do things in-house. They'll do it themselves because we have taught them and we offer them a workshop to actually give them those tools. So yeah, that's the nature of an agency service-based business you will always be flipping through clients. That's why we need to keep our pipeline full so we have new potential clients to sign up if we ever drop off with some. That's just the nature of any service-based business. You will always have a cycle of new clients and old clients going. That's why we need to keep our pipeline full so if we lose one, we can replace them with two so we can continue growing our agency. Now, the fourth thing I wish I knew before I started is you need to hire based on personality and not based on skill because skills can be taught but personality cannot and when I first started the agency I was outsourcing to anybody that I thought had the skills that I needed I wanted people that could get return on investment that could do the job that I wanted them to do the problem is we had such a high turnover rate because we were clashing personality wise they weren't putting in the work or they weren't as determined as I want them to be their work ethic simply wasn't there because they were treating it as if it was a freelancing gig which on the outside it was and it's because I was hiring wrong and so I changed that and I started hiring people that were behind our company culture, that shared our mutual vision for a world where all aspiring entrepreneurs find success, that understood that when they joined the company, they were joining a very young company and they could grow with our company and mold into this very successful and fundamental part of the business. Because ultimately, every person that joins our company now is a founding member who is going to become a director or a manager of a team at some point or another. And so we started hiring people who we could see mold into that kind of person that we need them to be in the future so the company can survive long term and we don't have to turn over people so much. So hire people based on their personality. Think about what your company culture is. What is it that you stand behind? What are your passions in life? And hire people who share those same passions. Believe me, it's gonna make it so much easier to work with those people and your team members will become your friends. There's this saying in business that you shouldn't mix friendship and business. And I don't believe in that, right? It hasn't caught me out yet. All of my team members, I consider friends and the new ones, we're still building really good relationships and they will become my close friends in the future. And I want to make an active effort to build a very solid relationship with every member of our team and be behind what they care about as human beings. Because if you show to someone else that you care about them and not just the work they're doing for you, they'll put in so much work for your business and they'll go above and beyond for your company and for your clients to make sure that they deliver exceptional results for you in whatever they are doing for you. So hire based on personality and not based on skill. Now the fifth and final thing is not something I wish I knew before I started because I was gifted in knowing this when I started and this is what propelled me forward in my agency at the beginning. And it's that sales is everything. Trust me on this. I preach about it a lot. Agency-based businesses, service-based businesses are sales-driven companies. 
You have to be comfortable with selling to people. And it doesn't matter if you have no experience when you're first starting out, because nobody has experience with sales when they're first starting out. All this is, is a conversational problem solving exercise. It's one person speaking to another person, one person helping to help solve that other person's problems. Now, when you strip it all back and look at it like that, you're doing them a good service. You're doing them justice. You're trying to help the world and make it a better place because you're trying to improve their overall quality of life by increasing the sales of their business. And that's going to affect their family, their friends, and it's going to help them fish for themselves for the rest of their lives. And so you need to get comfortable with selling. You need to get familiar with selling and you need to dive head first into sales. Always, always, always keep your pipeline full. It's a detriment to so many agencies in their founding stages. When they sign up three or four clients, they get comfortable, they focus all their eggs on just delivering a great service to those clients, which is great, but then they forget to keep their pipeline full. And if they lose one of them clients for whatever reason, they wanna take things in-house or maybe something goes wrong, someone cocks up when you hire a new member of the team, then you're left with two, three, four thousand pounds a month less revenue and you have no one to fall back on to replace that. And it only hurts when you lose a client, when you have nobody to replace that with. If we lose clients, yeah, it's like, ah, okay, that's a shame. But how many clients have we got in the pipeline? A lot, fine. So we keep our pipeline full so it never hurts if we lose clients. The business can always carry on moving forward and keep growing. Sales is everything. Do not forget that, guys. And most importantly, when you're first starting out, make sure you just set some baby step targets, right? If you haven't got much time, reach out to 10 new companies per day. All of you that are watching this right now can reach out to 10 new businesses per day. If you do that when you're first starting out, okay, cold call them, email them, DM. If you do that every single day, five days a week, 10 new businesses, you're gonna be growing every single month and you'll hit six figures within your agency within six months, 12 months at an absolute maximum. And even if that's even if you cock up all of the sales. With sales, it truly is a numbers game. You just need to stick to your targets and be resilient enough to get back to them when you have a day full of rejections. Because not every day is gonna be easy. Building a business is tough. It's a lonely game sometimes. And when you've spent all day on the phone, sending emails, DMing, and you've had nothing but rejection after rejection, that can be very demotivating. But that is what separates successful from unsuccessful business owners. They are not afraid to receive rejection. And they welcome rejection as something that is inevitable when you're starting any company, regardless of that's an agency or an e-commerce or an app even based business. Again, any business you're gonna start, you're gonna get rejections. Be comfortable with that and bounce back stick to your targets because sales is everything that's it guys they're the five things i wish i knew before i started my agency make sure you enter the competition if it's still going comment down below with the things that you wish you knew before you started your agency i'll be back again soon cheers